So this is pretty much the reality of temperatures when you uh, run any of these 13th gen CPUs, even at stock. So this is a 1300KS at 1.3 volts with low line calibration uh, level 6, 5.5 five on the CPU cores, so pretty much at stock, 4.5 on the E cores and 5 gigahertz on the cache. So let me uh, verify you the clock speed, so 5.5, five, 4.5 five, five, and uh, 5 gigahertz on the cache and 8200 on the memory. This resulted in uh, 72.86 8, points in Cinebench R11.5, but the temperatures were already through the roof pretty much. So the warmest core was the core number 8, as the first core is 0, 99 degrees, so uh, the P cores were around 90, and the atom cores were at a bit over 80. So this is definitely warm. I'm using the stock ILM on the Z790 Apex. Very good mounting on the CPU as the Apex has the, uh, is it actually called X socket still nowadays, but it has the uh, former generation mounting holes along with the new ones. So you can actually use uh, LGA 11.5X mounting. So all of the EK mounting gear, etc., works just fine on this motherboard. So uh, the mount itself is all right, but I'm using uh, some of the cheaper thermal pastes from China. So this is actually the GD007. I tested it along with the uh, uh, GD900 or however it is called. So it, it actually performed somewhat okay. It's definitely not the best, but even with something like KPX, G6 Extreme, Arctic, MX5, uh, whatever how they are called, they would hit nearly the same temperatures anyway. So we do have pretty good uh, headroom to uh, gain from uh, deleting, so I will be deleting the CPU with the rocket cool uh, deleter kit I got from the uh, guy I'm actually building this system for, and I, we will be replacing the uh, stock indium solder with liquid metal, thermal grizzly conductor out, and I will be using the uh, contact frame to uh, make the uh, bending less crucial on the CPUs IHS. It should help a little bit, but it does depend on your cooling solution as well. Some of these uh, water blocks, they are actually made for a bit like, is it convex or concave, but they are not like fully flat, with uh, really flat cooling solutions like liquid nitrogen containers and so on, you can actually see pretty perfect thermal paste spread once you use the uh, contact frame on the CPU. But anyway, so these temperatures are definitely too warm. I wouldn't run any AVX-based workload with this kind of temperatures. They would just instantly hit 100 degrees and so on. So this will be our starting point. And uh, from here, I would expect we can get something like 5.6 to 5.7 plus stable with reasonable temperatures after deleting and so on. But this is not like very... Uh, fantastic result if you ask me at the moment because the temperatures are just so high. So deleting the 1300KS CPU will be the main topic of this video. So as you probably saw, the temperatures are pretty much nuts on these 13th generation CPUs. If an average Joe buys any of these uh, latest CPU models from Intel like the 1300K, the KF or especially the 1300KS, it's very likely the temperatures will just hit 100 degrees Celsius, even on a very strong water cooling setup when you run the CPU at stock, especially in AVX based workloads. So the, the stock VCO is usually just way too high for the stock frequency on these CPUs. So uh, it's very common you will see stock voltages of like 1.35, even 1.4. So the first thing you usually do is just undervolt the CPU and then find out is the stock frequency still stable at the lowered voltage. So I will be using the Rocky Cool uh, deleting kit for 12th and 13th gen CPUs on this video. So this is pretty much the same thing if you were deleting, let's say like a 12900K or KF, whatever. I used this particular uh, kit once when I deleted one of the earlier like uh, generation CPUs, what was it like 900K or 1900K? I don't really remember right now, but the uh, Rocky Cool uh, kit is actually pretty good. So they do actually give you the uh, Quicksilver kit you can use to remove the uh, 
indium solder residues and it actually works it's actually a very good like kit to remove most of the indium solder from the die itself and from the bottom side of the IHS it's a lot better way to do it compared to just scrapping the indium solder residues with some uh, sharp object like a metal knife so uh, I already placed the CPU on the bottom side of the deleting uh, tool over here so it only goes like one way in the uh, tool itself so there's the small arrow over here which you have to match on the CPU itself we have the top part over here and I think the only like risky part of this whole process is the uh, small like components that are present on the CPU's PCB like that are outside the IHS I mean so there are four over here and four over here so we obviously don't want to detach any of those small components from the CPU because then you would have to uh, resolder those uh, detached ones back on the place and that's something uh, that's pretty hard as you can imagine so uh, it's pretty uh, straightforward so the IHS will be pushed from this side towards this side and that should uh, just uh, move the IHS and it shouldn't risk detaching any of the components over here so uh, I think it's pretty straightforward so I will not be uh, reliding the IHS onto the CPU as this CPU will be going to another user so uh, I'm building a system for another local user who's also a member on our Finnish tech media site forum called IO Tech so uh, he asked me to build like uh, a pre-overclocked system from him for him I mean so he sent me all of these parts and I will just be putting all of the parts together and doing some mild overclock on the CPU as well as on the memory but yeah so let's uh, start this whole thing so uh, I think this should be pretty straightforward there are no like clear instructions included so uh, this probably just goes like so then there are three screws included Now as these CPUs are soldered, instead of using just normal like conventional thermal paste you do actually have to use some force when you are deleting the CPU. So uh, I, I usually don't want to relid these CPUs because I want to be able to swap the thermal interface material like uh, whenever I need to do it. So I want to like leave that option open so I usually just uh, apply the tim I wish to use so mostly it's liquid metal for air and water use and if I want to change it to a conventional thermal paste for some sub-zero use I just uh, clean the liquid metal apply the conventional thermal paste and clamp the CPU back in the socket but yeah so uh, that's pretty much it so we can actually use this hole over here to follow like is the IHS moving when we uh, turn that large screw over there to delete the CPU but yeah this is this is definitely not something uh, many people might feel like comfortable with because in the end these CPUs are pretty expensive as you can imagine so let's try to give it a go could actually hear a little bit of like uh, like glue or the indium solder itself like giving up but now it's definitely deleted but it's definitely much harder than those thermal paste based CPUs like 3770k 4770k and 6700k those you can almost like delete with just your fingers if you have a very good like deleting tool but this definitely required a bit of force so I was actually quite afraid to turn the wrench like very tight so that's it all of the uh, actually hold on so all of the components are still in place there are four over there four over there okay and now still quite tight 
you definitely want to keep on pushing because it's not like uh, fully detached right after the uh, solder itself and the glue starts to give up. That's the CPU and that's the IHS. So we have a few of these polishing films and we have some cotton pads to use with the Quicksilver. So let's try on top of the CPU first. Yeah, and now we take the include a cotton pad and start just cover the entire we might have to apply some more but you have to cover the entire die so it starts to dissolve the indium solder residue on top of the die so this is definitely a much more convenient way to do this compared to using like scrapping the indium solder with like very sharp knife or something like that. It's been a while since I did, did this last time, so I think you just have to wait a little bit so that it starts to dissolve the indium solder. We might want to do the same thing on the IHS as well while we are waiting. So here's the IHS. You can see the gold plating over here. So you can see it's quite rough material that indium solder so we actually got pushed on the other edge when we were deleting the CPU. Let's move that a little bit and apply the same thing on this side as well. Okay that's done now we just let it wait some time and now let's try the CPU again and okay, that's pretty much the end result after removing the indium solder residues from both the die and from the bottom side of the IHS. It actually uh, comes off pretty easily towards the end, but you actually have to use quite a few applications of the Rocky Cool uh, Quicksilver, what they provide with the deleting kit. So uh, you just have to apply it a few times and keep wiping the surface with the included cotton pads. It starts to uh, uh, solvent over time, but it's it's pretty tough material when it's sticking on the die and on the IHS So I definitely wouldn't use any like sharp object like a knife or whatever to uh, remove it because you end up scratching the surfaces like pretty easily Now I actually made a mistake at the start of this video So uh, it seems that on this 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs you actually have to remove the silicone glue residues that are around the die on top of the CPU's PCB and on the IHS as well. I tried it very briefly on the Asus Apex and the temperatures were all over the place between the individual cores. So the overall like average was all right, but like one or two of the uh, P cores just hit 100 degrees nearly instantly in uh, easy test like Cinebench R11.5 at 1.3 volts. So that's because of uh, bad contact. There's no like, uh, there's no perfect contact across the entire CPU die and that's pretty much what happens. So part of the cores are all right, part of the cores just uh, don't have adequate cooling. So it's better to just uh, remove the silicone uh, glue residues altogether and don't use anything on the PCB if you don't want to re-glue the CPU I just back onto place. I generally don't want to re-glue the I just back because if you want to change the thermal interface material between the die and the I just, it's much easier to change it when the I just is not glued on. So if you want to change from liquid metal to let's say a conventional thermal paste like KPX or Cryonaut, you have to delete the CPU again. So uh, now I pretty much got the surfaces clean. After you get most of the indium solder residues gone, you have to use the uh, flitz uh, polishing material they provide with the deleting kit. I ended up using like over one entire pack of this stuff they provide with the deleting kit. So you have to apply it on the surfaces and just 
keep wiping the surface once again with a cotton pad and it starts to get like all shiny and polished. So it looks pretty all right if you ask me and it really takes a lot of the gunk away from the surface. So now once we got all said and done I'm going to be installing the CPU on the motherboard and checking the temperatures once again. So the thermal interface material of choice for this kind of application will be liquid metal. I will be using the Thermal Grizzly uh, Conductor now, which is one of the best liquid metal thermal interface materials out there on the market that you can actually buy. So I'm going to be applying it on the die right now and I'm also going to be applying a tiny layer of the stuff on the bottom side of the IHS as well. This is actually a team you have to manually spread every time. It doesn't spread from the pressure of the uh, actual mounting like the conventional thermal pastes. So uh, I'm not going to be using the sharp like needle. I'm just going to be uh, applying this like pretty carefully. So just make sure you don't accidentally apply too much. And it's always best to apply liquid metal when the CPU is actually removed from the uh, socket and it's far away from the motherboard because it's not the first time someone accidentally spills liquid metal into the CPU socket itself and it's very painful to get it all cleaned up because this actually, as you can probably know already by now, this is conductive. So this could actually damage your components in the worst case if it, if it gets spilled onto areas you don't want it uh, to get to. So let's just apply a pretty uh, like tiny layer. I'm going to apply a little, more, a little bit more and then I'm going to do the same process on the IHS as well. Okay, I think that's all right. And now the same process on this side. Luckily, there are no uh, like any components around the uh, die itself on this uh, CPU generation, like no uh, tiny components or any golden contact pads which could get uh, into contact with the liquid metal. So we can pretty much just safely apply this and just uh, install the CPU and it should be all right. If there were any like components around the die, you would have to cover them first with some material that prevents the uh, possible uh, spills of liquid metal getting uh, into contact with those components or contact pads. But yeah, that's pretty much the end result now. So now I'm going to be installing the CPU on the motherboard again and let's check the temperatures in similar workloads uh, with the same exact settings as at the start. And now the CPU is installed on the motherboard once again. The good thing about the Z790 Apex is that it has the X socket, if it's still called as such. So it does have LGA 11.5X mounting holes along with the LGA 1700 mounting holes. So I can actually use the old LGA 11.5X mounting with my uh, Alpha Cool Ice Block XPX CPU water block, although this mounting is actually from an old EK CPU water block, but doesn't matter. So uh, let's turn on the system and let's hope that we can actually see better numbers on the uh, actual tests. Okay, now I'm in the operating system once again, CPU Z and core temp. Let's see what kind of numbers we can see. So very quickly gonna run W prime because it's easier because if we get any of those individual calls hitting 100 or close to 100 it will uh, not hit them as easily in okay those are good temperatures so 60 45 so I think it's safe to run Cinebench based on these numbers but yeah previously it was all over the place and like one or two individual cores were hitting 100 degrees, which is not very safe. Okay, so uh, this is definitely better than at Stark, but now we are definitely like uh, 10 or a bit over 10 degrees cooler on the hottest cores compared to where we were at Stark. So uh, it's like 70. 276 and the hottest core was core number 8 so 86 degrees of course the ambient room temperature might be a little bit different compared to what it was during that initial uh, run on the first run 
the hardest call was between like 95 and 100 degrees during this very same test. So uh, we, uh, we can call this at least like a 10 degree improvement, like 10 to 15 degree improvement. And I can still get this further if I uh, replace the stock ILM with the uh, thermal grizzly or thermal take uh, contact frame. The only minus part about that one is that most of these coolers like CPU water blocks etc. They are actually a little bit like uh, they are not flat. They are designed to take this uh, unevenness on the CPU heat spreaders into account. So uh, if you want to get the most out of the uh, contact frame, you have to use a cooler that has fully flat surface, like for example a CPU LN2 container. You could always even a lap a CPU water block, but that's something extra you would have to do, but that would work. So uh, I don't expect like that large gains when using a normal CPU water block like this, because I already know that my CPU water block is not uh, fully flat. It's a little bit taller at the center compared to the sides, but this is already a pretty good result. So now we can actually uh, raise the clock speed like relatively safely and uh, actually maintain it like stable so uh, we can give it we can actually uh, give it a go very briefly so uh, if we run let's say 5.7 this might crash though but 5.7 4.5 atom 50 on the cache and does it crash like instantly no it doesn't so only 82 85 this this actually crashed immediately before deleting when I tried to run this and now we could even pass 5.7. So this whole process does actually help you to stabilize the uh, actual uh, use of the CPU. So now after deleting, it's much more convenient to use the CPU even at start, because uh, for some reason, as these are so maxed out already at the factory, you pretty much hit 100 degrees Celsius on the individual cores when you run the CPU at start, even on very good water cooling. So. Uh, this whole launch is pretty uh, weird from Intel, if you ask me. So uh, this will be a very large surprise to many end users how warm these CPUs actually run. So uh, you could almost say that it's almost like uh, faulty release from Intel in, uh, su in some uh, form or the other. So uh, any like high-end CPU should be able, like should be relatively like stable and relatively cool with reasonable uh, cooling methods so uh, yeah pretty hard to say but yeah that's pretty much the end uh, conclusion of the deleting so you can definitely gain at least like 10 to 15 degrees on the cpu temperatures not as easy process to do compared to previous generations so you have to use a lot of force on the actual uh, deleting process and you have to uh, use a lot of time to get all of the indium solder residues off from the CPU die itself and from the bottom side of the IHS. But if you ask me, if you are going to be building a very high-end system and you know for sure you are going to be using it for a very long period of time and you want to uh, max out the CPU to full extent, then you could consider about deleting. And it's even better like situation if you can share the deleting tool with other users nearby, so uh, in your local community, because the deleting tool, it does cost a little bit, like a few dozen uh, dollars or euros, so uh, the overall price comes down per deleting uh, process, if you can actually uh, share the tool with other users. So uh, definitely consider it if you have the courage to do it and you want to max out your CPU, and yeah, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.